Hi, I'm Elaine Holding. Welcome to my blog.stampwithelaine.com. I have a fun fold card for you today using a slightly larger card base called an arrow card. It looks like an arrow and this is what it looks like inside. The secret of this card is to use a card front that is easily divisible by two. I originally made this as a display stamper for one of the team meetings I attended. My upline had sent me all the materials and I had to make a minimum of four items for display. And in fact, um, I think I made about 13 or 14 items. So I will share those in the coming weeks using different products. I can't take credit for this design. It was originally made by a very talented lady called Sam from Mixed Up Craft. The card base is 7 inches by 10 inches in metric that is 17.8 centimeters by 25.4 centimeters. The stamp set I'm using is called Verdant Garden which is an add-on from the Magnolia Lane Suite. The other items I'll be using are the inks from Mossy Meadow and Mint Macaron. The designer series paper I'm using is called Garden Lane and it coordinates with the uh, Verdant Garden stamp set and this is actually an add-on from the Magnolia Lane suite. It's one side and that's the other side. For the matte layers you need two pieces of mossy meadow cut at six and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. In metric that's 16.5 centimeters by 12.1 centimeters. And you need a whisper white piece as well, also cut at the same size, six and a half by four and three quarter inches, 16.5 by 12.1 centimetres. A piece of Garden Lane DSP, five and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. In metric that will be 14.6 centimetres by 10.8 centimetres. To start with, Take your mint macaron cardstock and align it at the 5 inch mark and score at 5 inches. Then with the long side on top, uh, on the right hand panel, you want to align the score line at 2.5 inches. Let me score that so I can see it better two and a half inches and just make a mark don't score just make a little indentation on the cardstock at the top and at the bottom okay and then with the same side where you've made the marks for the halfway mark on this panel here you want to find the halfway mark up there and this is seven inches, so you align it at three and a half inches <coughs> and make a mark there. I should do it on the scoreboard, it would be easier for you to see. The other alternative is for you to use a pencil and ruler to make your marks and then do your scoring that way. Then you want to score from that top right hand score line down to the centre point here. So I'm lining it on my scoreboard at the six inch mark and swiveling the cardstock so that the centre point is also on that six inch score line. I'm sorry if it's out of shot but I haven't got any room really on my desk. I'm aligning the cardstock on the score line here at the six inch mark on my scoreboard and then swiveling the cardstock so that the centre of this bit also hits that six inch score line and then I'll do a score here okay it has to be fairly accurate so I've got that first score line now I want to use this mark I made on the edge of the cardstock down to the same point so it's right there on the six inch score line, swivel my cardstock and then run my 
stylus down to meet at that same point and do the same here so halfway mark there on this edge swivel my cardstock so that this also meets at the six inch score line and score down the first score line you made that's a mountain fold and the same with the other side and then the second score line you made is a valley fold so that forms your arrow and then you just burnish it and it's better to glue it down so first I'm going to apply a bit of adhesive on here be careful how far you put your adhesive because um, if you go too far down it will show Got some here as well. Oops. Luckily I've got one of these rubbers which will take excessive adhesive away. We'll set that aside and we need to start cutting. We need to find the halfway mark on these pieces here. So find the halfway mark, which is three and a quarter inches. And I'll just speed this up while I'm doing it. So top right corner and top left corner cut down to this centre point here. So you repeat it for the um, remaining pieces, the other mossy meadow piece and the whisper white piece as well. So you keep one with both the triangles, <clears throat> then you need one mossy meadow for the inside and one whisper white for the inside. And these ones you can use again later so it's not wasted. Next you want to cut your DSP. Now this one measures five and three quarters by four and three quarters. So the halfway mark on that will be two and seven eighths inches, which is 7.3 centimeters. There's the center mark at two and seven eighths inches. So I need to cut, cut from the top right hand corner down to that mark there. Make sure it's in the cutting groove. And from that corner down to this point again. And we need to keep those. So now we need to adhere those pieces to the mat layers. So again, I'll speed up this uh, section here. Now I need to adhere these to the top and the two sides here on the base card. Bring in my foam mat because I'm stamping with photopolymer stamps. <clears throat> Ink up my stamp. I want to stamp this image here onto the card and I'll glue this piece onto the inside of the card And then this piece goes on top to cover up the 
folds here. Next I'm going to stamp this little image here in Mossy Meadow Fussy cut them. I've already done one so I'll just do one to show you so as not to make the video too long. Angle your scissors at a 45 degree angle, move the paper, not your scissors. Bring back my mint macaron ink with stamp love in mint macaron and I'm just gonna cut this I'll pop one of the flowers on a dimensional Curl it a little bit Bit of glue on the bottom Another dimensional and finish it with a rhinestone. So that's the card finished. Now this one <coughs> I've deliberately kept it simple by doing a bit of stamping and fussy cutting to embellish it. All the supplies I used will be below this show more section underneath my YouTube video and there'll be links to my online store. I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, tutorial. Pop back for more inspiration next time. Do subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Bye.